part of the Boundless Audio Podcast Network. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Artist Pivot Podcast. I am your host, Ayana Major Bay, and I happen to be an actor, voiceover artist, mentor, and world traveler. This is a bi-weekly show featuring conversations about pivots and life lessons from the perspective of artists, those who work in and around the arts, and arts educators. Everyone possesses the ability to pivot. You just have to be reminded sometimes, and that is what I am here to do. To stay up to date and in the know about merchandise, exclusive content, and how to support the show, please subscribe to the newsletter at ayanabay.com slash podcast. That's A-Y-A-N-A-B-E-Y dot com slash podcast. And there is a link in the show notes. We'll get to this week's episode after a word from our sponsors. I have found that therapy is a tool to use to improve your life in one of the healthiest ways. For those who are working on their mental health and well-being, on a journey of facing your fears, or trying therapy for the first time, our show sponsor BetterHelp is here to help you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Artist Pivot. That's BetterHelp.com slash Artist Pivot. We Audition is the video chat community where actors can audition, self-tape, rehearse, and get expert industry advice. Get instant self-tape readers through video chat, browse through the dedicated actor meditations, podcasts, and books, meet casting directors in the virtual green room, and also make money by becoming a reader for other actors. If you join We Audition and use code PIVOT, you will receive a 25% discount on your membership. Yes, that's right. We Audition and the Artist Pivot have partnered to bring you this discount. From my own experience, I love being a reader for other actors, and We Audition is so convenient for me when I need a reader myself. Again, if you join We Audition and use the code PIVOT, you will receive 25% off your membership. Link in the show notes. All right, y'all. So today on the podcast, I am so excited to say that joining me is Talia Thiesfield. And she just so happens to be a full-time actor, voiceover artist, talent, and career coach. And she currently appears as a reoccurring character on FBI named NYPD Rep Maya. She's also starred on various television shows, including Succession, Veep, Limitless, and Kevin Can Wait. A lover of new works, she has originated and helped develop a number of roles for off-Broadway and regional houses. As a coach and educator and consultant, she has been a guest lecturer at Columbia University, Rutgers University, Montclair State University, shout out to my alma mater, the University of Connecticut, the No Marking Society founded by Kate Lumpkin, and the Broadway Collective. She is the founder of the Act of Style Coaching, which has gained worldwide popularity and the respect and collaboration of industry professionals nationwide on Instagram. She uses her own trademark method to provide acting, branding, and career coaching that combines business savvy with craft, empowering actors to feel more confidence, pride, and authenticity in their work. Y'all, welcome to Leah Thesfield. Hello, how you doing? Hello. (laughs) (laughs) How you doing today? I am happy to be here yes. and and um, happy that we are finally connecting, friend. We've been we've been internet Instagram friends for a minute. We have, we have, y'all. We made it out the Instagram chat. We made it. <laughs> we made it out the chat. We made it out the chat. We outside. We, we outside. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So, Talia, this is my favorite question to everybody. So, if I texted okay. you right now and said, hey, how you doing? How you feeling? But you could only respond in emojis only. What would you text me? Okay. Mm, how many emojis I get? Unlimitless. This is your, this is your reply oh, to me. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to keep it succinct. <laughs> 
But I would say the emojis would be the girl like this. Uh huh. Yes. Mm hmm. With her, the girl with her hand to the side, like she's like, ooh. Right. Because to me, that's kind of like a tongue pop emoji. Yes. And that's always where I'm at. <laughs> So we would give like little side hand girl. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she would be like the tan colored one. Um, I would give, I would put a taco because yes. I'm hungry. <laughs> yes. I'm hungry and I'm hungry for something that I don't have in my apartment. So like when we're done with this, I'm probably going to like step out and go and go get like a taco or something. Yes. <laughs> um, so girl with the hand, taco. Um, and I would do like the the champagne bottle because yes. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to be on an on on the the pivot podcast talking about my pivot. Yes, ah, oh, I those love that. My emojis. I I love those emojis and I accept your imaginary text. Thank you for that so much. It made me very happy. <laughs> that is the best question ever. <laughs> I might Thank steal you. that. I might steal that and start asking my clients that. You can have it. You can have it. I, I, you know what I got it from? I got it from, oh, my gosh, what show was I watching? Oh, I am blanking on the show, but it was between um, a, a, a daughter and a stepmom, and they would ask them, that's that question to each other every day, and it'd be like, unicorns and this and that. Like, that would be the answers. I feel like I have seen, what, did, did, did you see that, like, on Instagram or something? Because I feel like I've seen this clip. Yes, and I'm like, but I remember watching the show. Like, I was watching episodes of it, and I can't remember what show it is, but I took it from that. I was like, that is great, because they would ask, how you doing, and have to respond in emojis. I love that. And I was like, I'm Well, what you're going to have to do is when you figure out what it is, you're going to send me a message, and then I'm going to respond with my emojis. Yes. Bingo. We got it. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And I would probably text you back a couple of tacos to be like, can you get me some? I'll be. Word. I'm, I'm coming. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. So thank you for that text. Thank you. I like to start with that to see, see where you're at. See how you're feeling. What's going on today? You know? Uh, yes. Yeah. So um, as we said, y'all, we finally made it out of the Instagram chat. So I'm so excited to talk to Talia about her pivots and and career and like how you've survived this thing that we choose to be in. Or sometimes I say chooses us because like mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be an actor and entertainer and performer and all of the above. But like how to stay in flow and be in our own careers and in our own lanes and, you know, not compare to others, which is very hard. <laughs> yes. I know that's right. Yeah. So I want to start with how you got started in the industry. Were you um, a child performer? Were you a child who just loved the arts and was like, oh, I know I'm going into it? Or was it something you were like, over the years, you're like, actually, I think I'm going to try out being an actor. Uh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Um, this is one of my favorite stories to tell. <clears throat> um, so I, I kind of, I like a lot of folks, I, I got started early on. I wasn't a child actor professionally, but I did get started as a kid okay. uh, in theater camp. Yeah. Um, but I was a camp kid. Uh, both of my parents worked. Um, my dad is also an artist. Mm -hmm. He's a photographer and he ran his own business. So he was, you know, doing his thing. And my mom worked um, for the state mm -hmm. and was busy, busy working mom. So I was a camp kid um, when summers came around and, and we got out of school. Top priority of the summer for my parents was what are we doing with Talia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had been in every camp you could think of sports camp. I was a junior archer because I went to archery. Camp. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> uh, I was a, an equestrian because I was riding horses every year at Girl Scout camp. Yes. Um, so finally, you know, by the time I hit, like, I think it was maybe the summer after fourth grade, mm -hmm. maybe fifth grade. Um, mom suggested this this theater camp which was kind of a off branch like mm -hmm. a, a branch off of this other camp that i had attended yeah and i was not really interested i was like i don't know i, I, I to be honest i i think 
I thought it was like a nerdy thing oh. because at the time I was a little bit of a tomboy. I don't know if that that phrase is still used, but I was a sporty kind of like no nonsense, low maintenance kind of gal. Mm-hmm. Um, and long story short, ended up uh, my mom convinced me and I said, fine, I'll go to this theater camp. Yeah. And they were doing The Wiz. Yes. And I was very familiar with The Wiz Mm -hmm. because I had watched it. I had watched that movie a million times. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, we had our little auditions. I showed up for my little audition with a Walkman for those, for those, uh, what is it? Young, young kids, Mm -hmm. the Gen Z's. It's a box that plays a (laughs) tape tape with music. Uh You plug in your headphones. You have to hold it like on your hip. Mm -hmm. You know, just Google it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I walked up with my Walkman, put my little headphones on, and I sang, Vanessa Williams, save the best for last. (laughs) Yes. That was my audition. Ask me what I was trying to audition for. Ayana. No idea. What role I want. You want you wanted Dorothy. No. no. Oh, you didn't want okay, wait, okay, hold on. You wanted I wanted Was it Glinda? No. Was it I wanted to be the lion. <laughs> I wanted I to be the that. funny one. <laughs> I wanted to be the funny one, mm-hmm. like entertaining with the best costume. Mm-hmm. I got to, I will be able to put on like makeup and paint my face. Fair. And I already had the hair. Fair. I got big curly hair. I wanted to be the lion like nobody's business. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and here I come singing, save the best for last. <laughs> So surprise, surprise, I show up the next day when the cast list is announced and I see that I've been cast as Dorothy. Mm -hmm. And I was mad as hell. (laughs) I was furious. I cried. I threw a temper tantrum. I was devastated. And when my mom picked me up and I was crying in the car, before she even, I even told her what happened, Mm -hmm. she just assumed that maybe I didn't get a part Mm -hmm. or like I wasn't, you know, I, I, all she knew I wasn't happy. She said, well, you know, every, all the parts are important Mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. And she goes, so what part did you get? And I said, I got Dorothy. (laughs) And my mom was like, oh God. (laughs) Needless to say, one day of rehearsal as Dorothy, and uh, well, here we are. <laughs> I made a whole career out of it. Uh-huh. Um, I, I I got used to I got used to the limelight very quickly. You, got, you were like, <laughs> oh, I could do this, <laughs> and that's how I got into it. And and you know, uh, that's the very long, fun answer. Mm-hmm. But the short answer is, is I grew up in a household that really embraced the arts, mm-hmm. um, and really embraced me doing lots of things. Yeah. I feel like growing up with an artist father, that in and of itself t- teaches you and instills in you the skill of pivoting. Mm. Because yeah. as a kid, my father was always like, love what you love, but also try lots of things, try new things. Mm-hmm. Because as an artist himself, he knew that down the line, if I were to become an artist, I was going to have to have a lot of tools in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And and that that proved to be true because when I got to college and when I graduated college and I entered the workforce yeah. um, and I had to find survival jobs, my father was always telling me, you know, you need multiple streams of income. You need multiple skills. Like, don't stop learning. Don't stop finding other interests mm-hmm. because anything can make you money. Mm-hmm. And, and there's more than one thing that can make you happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yes. That's where it all began. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love that so much. And that you were like, I'm upset about being Dorothy, but now you're like, actually, thank you very much because that oh, set yes. me now, up. <laughs> now, when my manager sends me something that is not principal, I'd be like, eh, excuse me, right. excuse you're me, like, what is this? Like, is that for me? <laughs> I know you're not emailing me. Do you not know she's a star? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love that. So I want to just ask you about the basically your father instilling instilling in you the fact that you need um, multiple streams of multiple income, streams of income and loves, but but 
not framing it as a backup plan. Because I can say to you that I got that. It was, okay, you could do the arts, but what's your backup plan? And it was the the separation of the two. But hearing you speak, I'm like, oh, no. Her father was like, no, 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 you could do it all. There is no, per se, backup plan. This, your career encompasses all of this. Absolutely. Um, I will just say a- anyone who follows my Instagram is probably familiar with a couple of my dad's uh common phrases. Mm-hmm. Um, he is my Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he always has some kind of like, it sounds like something out of a little like coffee table mm-hmm. book or something. But um, having multiple streams of income was something that I heard my whole yeah. life. And to this day, he still will remind me, yeah. um, you know, don't rest on you. Even when I'm really successful and working a lot mm-hmm. in my in, in my creative life, he went, well, I'll tell you, you know, that's how that's he talks. Right. He's, well, I'll tell you, you know, you know, you got to, well, you got to, you know, don't rest on your laurels. <laughs> you got to have multiple streams of income, you know, mm-hmm. that's how he talks. <laughs> so, um, but both of my parents, and I want to give credit to my mom mm-hmm. too, um, <clears throat> both of my parents were extremely supportive of my passion mm-hmm for for the arts and um when i told them that that's what i wanted to do with my life uh they both were like great Mm -hmm. um my mom being kind of the more uh i like to use the term civilians i guess some people say muggles but i say civilians my mom was the civilian Mm -hmm. so when i went you know when i went to um college and i got my bachelor's degree my bfa Mm -hmm. mom was like you know great make sure you're still doing good in your gen eds Mm -hmm. you're studying you're you're getting all the good grades and everything else it's not just about the major Mm -hmm. um she was always kind of the voice of reason there Mm -hmm. and then when i decided um when i decided i was going to go to grad school a lot of that had to do with my mom Mm -hmm. um My dad, being the artist, really was trying to support me in diving in and graduating and just moving to New York or moving to L.A. and just starting to do the thing. And mom was the one who was like, listen, you could just take three more years Mm -hmm. and get yourself a terminal degree where you can, like, fall back on something if you want Mm -hmm. to. Her thing was always if you want Mm -hmm. to, you know, like. Not saying that you're going to have to, but if you decide that you want to break or you want to go somewhere else, you're setting yourself up for Mm -hmm. that so you don't have to do it later. Mm -hmm. And I think as parents, they kind of met in the middle there as far as their support of me goes because dad was like, okay, fine. If you're going to go to grad school, just make sure you're always, you know, pursuing something. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're going to go to grad school, then during the summers, you're going to audition. You're going to make sure you're going to work during the summer. And, and, um, you know, you're not just going to come home during grad school and sit on the couch. You're going to take what you're learning. You're going to go apply it in the real world if you can. And that's what I did. I I ended up going to grad school and, and just like I did um, in undergrad during the summer, Mm -hmm. I was auditioning. I was, um, I would book shows. Mm -hmm. There was one summer that I did um, a workshop. Um, I came home, I I flew back to Connecticut Mm -hmm. and did a workshop at my alma mater for the summer. Mm -hmm. And then there was a year, a summer during grad school where I stayed. Mm -hmm. I went to UC Irvine, Mm -hmm. so I was in Southern California. I stayed and I decided I wasn't going to do anything super creative. Mm -hmm. I was going to make money. Mm And that's where dad's advice came into play. Mm. Um, I started temping. Um, I worked with a temp agency where I would be placed in all different kinds of offices, Mm -hmm. doing all kinds of things. And because my whole life, um, my dad was always instilling in me that like just work different jobs, try different Mm -hmm. things. I mean, as a kid, I, my kid, my high school jobs, I worked in a uh, video store, Mm -hmm. Gen Z, that's a a store where you used to go get cassettes Mm -hmm. to to, To watch watch movies. Like Blockbuster. Um, Yeah. Blockbuster, Google Mm -hmm. it. (laughs) (laughs) I used to work at a video store. I worked at a grocery store. I babysat, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then in college, same thing, I, 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 
worked as a server. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked in the the um, publicity department for the university, working in like I worked with archives for their their news publication. Yeah. I, I mean, I've done so. I've worked in offices for all kinds of business people. And so I carried that on doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that we're talking about this because, Ayana, Mm -hmm. guess what I did yesterday? What did you do? I interviewed with a temp agency for the first time in close to 20 years. Wow. (laughs) And because, you know, here we are in the middle of a strike. Um, My side hustle, right, outside of my acting career is coaching. Mm -hmm. And that's being affected by the strike Mm -hmm. because with nothing for people to coach, there's no reason for them to call me. So I said, you know, uh, I might need to go step into the civilian job market again. And I tapped into all of that advice that my dad gave me. Mm And um, got a recommendation from a dear friend yeah. who is also an actress. Um, shout out Olivia Griffin. Uh, and um, I, she recommended me. I interviewed. And I just found out today that I've been placed in a nice little cute temporary job that's going to use all of my office skills and my personality skills mm-hmm. and all the things that I've been, you know, building and curating within myself that I've always been able to apply as an artist. And now I'm, you know, for a time being, I'm going to, I'm going to apply that elsewhere, but it's a pivot. Right. It's I'm I'm pivoting as we speak. Literally as we speak, (laughs) you're making a pivot. Yes. Yeah. 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 A temporary pivot. And that's the thing. I think people need to understand that a lot of pivots, um, are temporary. Yes. Because yeah. once you pivot to one thing, you may spend time there, but eventually you're going to pivot to something else. Yes. Just like, you know, I'm pivoting in this direction and and I'm I'm going to focus on kind of making some supplemental income mm-hmm. and and kind of, you know, doing other things doesn't mean that all the other stuff is gone because mm-hmm. honey, when the auditions come, I'm going to have to take a long lunch break. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, we still an actor. But when I'm going to pivot for a minute. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once things change, once the strike, you know, hopefully um, we, we come to some negotiations and the strike is over. Yeah. Whenever that may be, I pivot right back. Right, right, right. right. So. Yes. Oh, okay. Wait, I want to take this conversation in two different ways. Let me see if I can combine them. Okay. Because I'm thinking about, because I've had this, like, I guess, point of, of realization with a couple of people I've talked to that it's like pivoting, the idea of pivoting, we've been projecting finality onto it. And there's mm-hmm. nothing final about it. You can pivot again. You're just pivoting for the moment. So I think my first question to you is, how did you come to a point, and maybe this was just taught to you since you were younger, but came to a point of like, pivoting isn't final. Pivoting isn't that I failed or pivoting isn't, I shouldn't be ashamed of it. It's just something I have to do right now and use my skills. So how did you get to that point where it's like, no, it's okay. Yeah, that's a great question. And, um, it's a great question. And to be honest, uh, I'd be lying if I said that, like, it kind of just happened or Mm -hmm. if it was easy. Um, I think I learned that pivoting was okay because of some really, I'll just say traumatic experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I think it really kind of, it really started, I think my first big pivot mm-hmm. was making the decision to go to grad school mm-hmm. uh, when everybody else was um, moving to New York. Yeah. And uh, uh, moving to California was a huge pivot for for many reasons mm-hmm. um my, my family dynamic my my relationship with my parents um you know i think they were really concerned uh just being a fish out of water being on a completely different coast mm-hmm. in a different kind of environment yeah. um and then one of the biggest things was uh right before i graduated m- one of my mentors in undergrad uh sat me down and and basically had a a tough love conversation with me. Mm -hmm. He would have lots of tough love conversations (laughs) with me. I think everybody has that one mentor who like is, is no bull with Mm -hmm. them. Um, 
So he said to me, he goes, you know, Talia, you've done really well here. You're a big fish in a small pond. He's like, but when you leave, you're not going to be the best one. Mm. And he said, and not just in school, like from here on out, you're not going to be the best. Mm -hmm. Um, Nobody really is. There's always going to be somebody. Mm -hmm. Even there's even, you know. There's even somebody who might be better than Meryl Streep at something, right? Yeah, right. So, like, there's always somebody <laughs> better. And I think getting to grad school and having that settle mm. and seeing how that that manifested was my first major pivot. Mm-hmm. Um, and upon graduating and just being in my 20s mm. and – failing at a lot of things. I think no, nothing will teach you, not even teach you how to pivot. Nothing will force you to pivot faster than a failure. Um, yeah. uh, and so whether it was failed relationship or failure to pay my car note and having my car repossessed. Um, yeah. I mean, I had a lot of funky pivots mm. and, um, uh, unfortunately, I say unfortunately, but I'm grateful for it. Um, I did have a pretty disastrous relationship that was part of the reason why I ended up moving mm-hmm. back to New York. And that probably was the pivot that taught me, um, or at least started to teach me mm-hmm. that these types of things were okay. Um, mm-hmm. once I, once I learned once I learned how to learn the lesson in the pivot, mm. that's when I started looking at the pivot mm. as something helpful yeah. instead of something hurtful. Um, <clears throat> and now, whenever I'm faced with a situation where I'm like, mm, okay, something's not working, I gotta, I gotta switch it up. Mm-hmm. Like right now, um, I'm able to look at the positives of it. Yeah. Um, and and I think that's also just growth. That's age. That's growth. Yeah. I mean, learning learning to change your perspective about the ups and downs of life and this career, mm-hmm. um, and learning to I, I say this a lot on my Instagram and to my clients, but learning to walk in gratitude. Yeah. Um, that that really. It makes you embrace the pivot, really. Yeah. Um, because when you're grateful for what you have, you're able to have so much more hope mm-hmm. about what is possible. Yes. Instead of having fear when you when you have to pivot, you're you're hopeful yeah. about what's possible. So now, yeah, I'm upset that there there are fewer auditions and um I'm upset that normally my show would probably be going back into production next month and that's not going to happen. And so I'm out of a job. Um, Yeah. Those things upset me, but Mm -hmm. I think it's, I'm kind of excited to like work a normal job for a little bit and have like a weekly paycheck Mm -hmm. and like have a schedule. You know what I mean? Like I'm kind of, I'm excited at the idea of like a a new structure. Um, And it's because I know that there's something on the other side of it. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, I know that it's that it's temporary. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I mean, really, nothing, nothing is permanent. Certainly not in this career, Mm -hmm. but nothing is permanent. So when you apply that to your pivots Mm -hmm. and you understand that everything is temporary Mm -hmm. for better or worse. You know, sometimes we don't always want everything, want it to be temporary, (laughs) but everything is temporary. And so whether it's good or bad, it, it, it makes you appreciate the present moment Mm -hmm. even more. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Over here preaching. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> let, let the church say amen. amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it but you you're absolutely right. It is that learn and it comes with age. It really does come with age and experience and like, oh, right. Like, and then also remembering the last time you pivoted and you survived. 
and what that uh, part yeah that part because if you are here and listening to this podcast right now you survived every pivot that you've been through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's 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 the biggest lesson. That's the biggest. Um, the, the, that's the the road to accepting yeah. the change and the pivot is understanding that like you're still you're here for another pivot to happen in the first place. So come on, right, right. <laughs> Yes. It ain't called survival of the fittest for nothing. You fit, honey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's exactly that. You're here to experience this pivot. And also what you said about having gratitude and learning the lesson. Okay, so what is this here to teach me? What do I need to know? What do I need to peel back? What is it? What am I going to learn right now that's actually going to help me in my next pivot or in my next journey? And sometimes we can't see it until we look back and go, oh, that's what that was about. But knowing that, you're like, oh, okay, I survived the last one. I'm going to survive this one because, you know, there's mm-hmm. something on the other side. I'm not here forever. And there's always something There's always something to learn. Mm-hmm. Case in point, mm-hmm. let me just yeah. just give give the friends a, a, a quick scenario, yeah. right? So this new job that I got uh, entails booking a lot of travel okay. for people, yeah. okay? Um, so in my head, I'm like, all right, so like what's the skill that I might be able to take out of this? Mm. Well, when the strike is over and, and things go back into production, I want to manifest for myself that I'm going to have to go um, – uh, to LA mm-hmm. for, for a show. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe there's something that comes up where I'm like, I can be an LA local. Cause I got, I got people out there. I got a place out there. Mm-hmm. So, um, maybe I might be in a situation where I need to get the best flight fast. Yeah. And if I, and if, and if I'm working for the next couple months on this platform, you know, booking flights for people, that's going to become a skill. Listen, Mm -hmm. my mother is the queen at booking a flight. And that's because at some point in her life, she was traveling all the time for work and she learned all the tricks of how to find the best prices and the best. And so same thing. I'm going to like, I'm going to walk out with a skill because in this economy, finding a good flight. I might, if that's a skill, I'll put it on my resume. That is a special skill. Okay. That is a special (laughs) skill. That very much is. And find a best, the best flight. Yes. At the best rate. Exactly. That very much is a special (laughs) skill. (laughs) Okay. It very much is. But to your point, there's always something to learn. Always something new to learn. um, And you got to be excited at the prospect of what you might learn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That. Even if you don't know what it is. That. It's that being excited about, oh, I, I know I'm going to learn something, but you don't know what it is you're going to learn. But let me learn. Yes. I, oh, I love that. So I wanted to ask you about how you then developed your own coaching business. And so it's like, I know you didn't have that, you know, since you graduated college. So that had to come over time. So where did that, like yep. the active style, like where, coaching come, like where did it come from? How did, how did you birth it? <laughs> Who that came from a series of pivots okay. too, Ayana. <laughs> um, so let's see. Let's. Let, I'll give you the bullet points. Uh, when I was living in LA, you know, living my best starving artist uh-huh. life, um, and had multiple jobs, uh, and w- there was a period of time where I worked like four jobs at one time when I was in LA. Yeah. I was an assistant to an entrepreneur. I was a production assistant for a production company. Uh, I worked at a restaurant. Um, and then there was something, I think I worked at two restaurants that, but there, I had four jobs mm-hmm. at one time. And, um, oh no, the fourth job was the job that introduced me into t- uh, coaching. Okay, okay. The fourth job was I was a uh, director and um, a like co-coordinator director of a kid's music and theater camp. Full circle. Yes, that was full circle. <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> so I directed um, and coached for youth theater in LA. Uh, and um the person that that got me into it and referred me to the to this company mm-hmm. at one point was like you know like 
these kids could use you outside of the program. Mm -hmm. Like you should, you should like, you know, you have a master's degree. You should think about like coaching kids. And so I started coaching kids while I was in LA and, and started, um, like my own kind of side business. Mm -hmm. And all of my clients basically came from the camp and they were kids who wanted to be doing better in the camp. Mm -hmm. So they would come to me Mm one-on-one. And, um, I did that for quite some time. And, uh, when I left, it it was really sad Mm -hmm. to leave my kids. I will say several of my kids Mm -hmm. who were like eight years old at the time are like currently on Broadway. Yes. (laughs) So, so a, that's how old I am. B, um, it was super fulfilling. It's super fulfilling work. Um, so when I moved to New York, uh, that was one of the the little kind of pivots that I I toyed mm-hmm. with when I was trying to find my footing. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, I got the side hustles, the side jobs. I was a hostess oh, yeah. and a server yep. and all of that. Um, but luckily, I had some uh, connections here in New York, mm-hmm. um, people who were already doing some serious youth coaching, mm-hmm. and uh, they had they knew uh, that I had done it in LA. Um, one particular person mm-hmm. I actually knew from LA, okay. and they had moved to New York before me. So when I got here, they were like, "Hey, you're here. Are you still working with mm-hmm. kids?" And I was like, "I can," and he brought me on. Okay. Um, And then I decided, you know, it's time to pivot. It's time to expand. Uh, I think I'm going to start focusing more on adults. And that's where the act of style came from. Um, Because at the time, uh, just in my own life, Mm -hmm. I felt like I was having trouble matching who I was on the outside Mm -hmm. with who casting saw me as Mm, mm -hmm. um there was like a disconnect of like my own personal style Mm -hmm. versus like how casting saw me Mm -hmm. um and so it all kind of started from a kind of like I don't know. I don't want to say vain or like that it was vanity, but it really came from more of like a style. We all got a little bit of vanity. Like a style thing. A little bit of everything. (laughs) It came from a style perspective. And that's where the act of style came from was Mm -hmm. because I got into talking to a lot of people Mm -hmm. about styling Mm -hmm. um, themselves and how to like represent themselves Uh, physically. Um, A lot of my perspective on that has changed, Mm -hmm. but that's where it started. Mm -hmm. But we pivoted. (laughs) So it started with styling people for their headshots, styling people for their auditions, talking a lot about the traditional Mm -hmm. sense of branding Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that I actually don't really adhere to anymore. Um, But the name, The Act of Style, came from that because I was combining acting with style. Um, And then over the years, I just, I started developing my own perspective on branding. Mm -hmm. um, And I kind of have a non-branding branding approach uh, now, which I call the archetype shade method. Um, And this all really came out of my styling work. And now the way that I work with people in both my my um, acting coaching, audition coaching, as well as my non-branding branding mm-hmm. work and my um, headshot styling and selection services. Yeah. Really, uh, it's about f- figuring out how you mm-hmm. approach all the roles, all the things. Because as humans, we're so multifaceted. There are so many versions of ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? Um, You and I can both play a mom, right? But we're going to be completely different kinds of moms. And both of us, I'm sure, have funny, quirky sides to us, Mm -hmm. right? We both can probably play a quirky character. But my version of a quirky character is going to be entirely different than yours. And so Mm -hmm. the pivot for me was really 
focusing more on, okay, what is your personal style? Mm -hmm. And not just aesthetically, but from the inside Mm -hmm. out, what is your essence? What is your personal panache, my favorite term? (laughs) And how does that affect how you do everything? Mm -hmm. Not just these tiny little singular types or, 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 you know, um, whatever word that people like to, you're, you're, you're casting your yeah, type, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But like, really, it's just like, how do you bring yourself into your work? Mm. What makes you special? Mm-hmm. How do you identify that and then harness that power mm-hmm. and bottle it up into something that you can spray on everything you do? <laughs> yes. You know? Uh-huh. Um, and so that's how it all kind of came about. But it yeah. really came through a series of pivots, mm-hmm. a lot of growth, a lot of point A to B to C, right? Mm. Um, And a lot of not just sticking to one thing, being open to change and kind of seeing where it goes. And I'm still doing that. Yeah. I'm still doing that in in my business and my in my working career. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Understood. Understood. So there's one. This is kind of unrelated, and then I have one that is related. So the unrelated question is: Did you ever work a job that you were just like, no, like I'm not doing this? <laughs> oh God. Um, oh, I'm sure I have. <laughs> yeah. I mean. I, the thing is, is I like nice things, Uh Ayana. I do too. And nice things cost money. Mm -hmm, They do. So (laughs) unfortunately, I I definitely can tell you about, yes, I I have worked a job like that, but I probably stayed a lot longer than I would have liked because I like the money. Mm -hmm. So like, um, oh man. There, there, I, I would probably say, like, some of my server stuff, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hospita- working in hospitality, it takes a very special person. Special person. <laughs> and I truly believe, like, there are, con- you, you know, there are countries, other parts of the world, where, like, you reach a certain age and you're, you have to join the military. Mm-hmm. Like you, at you, once you turn 13 or 18 or whatever, mm-hmm. like you have to join the military. Listen, I'm not, I'm not going that far. But I think in the United States, once somebody turns 16, they have to go work at a restaurant for like two years. Because they wouldn't act a the way they act now. A restaurant or a hotel. Yep. Yep. Restaurant or a hotel or something. They have to work in hospitality for at least two years. Because not only does it like build you a tough skin and and like develop your work ethic, Mm -hmm. but it also just teaches you to be nice to people. (laughs) That part. (laughs) Because, Because my, some of my hospitality work was the worst stuff that I did simply because of the way I was treated. Mm -hmm. And especially as a brown woman, uh, working in hospitality, serving people, um, I think it, it it there was a period of time I think it, it really gave me a complex mm-hmm. about like respectability politics mm-hmm. and like um, always feeling like I had to be palatable mm-hmm. and 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 everything I had to say everything that I said I had to make sure it wouldn't be taken the wrong mm-hmm. way because. So often, you know, people would complain and say, oh, she had an attitude. And I was like, no, you just didn't like that. I told you we were out of something. Right. (laughs) Or like, you didn't like that. I told you, oh, unfortunately, we're not able to do that here. Oh, but I have an attitude, you know. And so I think I think a lot of I I can't name a specific Mm -hmm. one, but. There were definitely times working in hospitality where I was just like, no. Yeah. And 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 to your question, mm-hmm. to to kind of address the whole like, oh, oh, hell no, I'm not doing yeah. this part of the question. Once I stopped serving, mm-hmm. um, I said I was never going back. Yep. 
And so when it came time now for this little pivot, and I was like, all right, Talia, how are we going to make a little bit more money? Because we like nice things. Mm -hmm. Um, I also just moved. And if you ever moved in New York City, you know that's expensive. (laughs) It's real expensive. (laughs) Not even expensive. expensive. Not not even expensive. (laughs) It's expensive because you can't afford the the, the rest of the work. Exactly. Okay. So I'm like, how are we going to make up this money? Um, And I said, well, Talia, you know, we made a promise to ourselves. Uh, we're not doing that anymore. And so that was part of my decision. My That was part of my pivot. And I think that's an important point to make, mm-hmm. right? Like pivots are always going to happen. Yeah. Pivots never stop happening. Yeah. It's part of life. You need to be open to change and, and n- things are temporary, mm-hmm. right? We all, We talked about that. But like you can carry over lessons from pivot to pivot. Yes. And you can set boundaries as you go, right? So like for me, Mm -hmm. at one point, I had to pivot to doing X, Y, Z. And I did that. Mm -hmm. And it worked for me for a time. But at some point, I said, okay, on the next pivot, Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't do this. Right? Right. I'm going to set that boundary. So, so there are part, you know, even though pivots continue to happen, you don't always have to go back to something that you pivoted to. Yes. And that's where I'm at now is that, yeah, okay, I'm going to do this, but I ain't never doing that again. (laughs) Listen, I'm in the same boat with you. My hospitality lasted six months. I was a waitress for six months and I was like, no. But then I went into like more customer service. So like I worked in retail for a long time. And, and I've never worked in retail. Never, okay. That's so funny. Retail was my thing. And then, then when I've left, I was like, oh, I'm not doing that again. Like, I'm not. But those weren't even the worst. My worst, Talia, I lasted two months. Ooh, and tell the me fact that I even spicy. lasted two months, this was one of my three jobs at the time. <laughs> and one of them was to literally stand in Times Square in costume and flyer. Flyers. You know how many people I know who did that, or I actually have a friend who's currently no. doing Never that. Never again in my life. Never again in my life. Well, I just want to give you some hope. I'm not going to say names because I don't know if this person would want me mm-hmm. to say this, but one of my very dear friends, I met. Yeah. We, 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 we were friends through a mutual friend yeah. and we had known about each other because I was living in California mm-hmm. and they were here in New York. But we'd known each, about each other for ages. Yeah. The day that we actually met in person, I was like, oh my God, it's so great to yeah. meet you. They were in Times Square passing out flyers for Book of Mormon. Ask me what that person does now. They're in Book of Mormon. Actually, they did end up in Book of Mormon. (laughs) But they are a very successful film, TV, and Broadway writer. Yes. You see what happens when you just trust the pivot? Just trust it. Just trust it. And case in point, that person became a writer because they started writing something backstage when they were understudying somebody. Mm. Pivot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they found another, and that's another lesson. Pivots can be big pivots, right? Like yeah. you can pivot completely out of your creative career, right? And and decide, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go back to law yeah. school, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's a huge pivot. Yes. Or p- sometimes pivots are small. Sometimes pivots are, I'm sitting backstage as an understudy or a swing on a show, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of sitting here with my thumb up my behind, and I don't know what mm-hmm. to do. Well, let me just start writing a script and then seeing where that goes. And then next thing you know, you are making your bread and butter as a writer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you least expected that to happen. Right. right. So sometimes pivots are internal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. They're a mix of internal and external. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. So I have one last question for you. And that would be, what would be like your nugget of wisdom to give folks? Like whether it's a lesson you've already learned or something you're still learning, but like what would be your nugget of wisdom? I got it. And I can't, and I'm going to be honest, it's not even mine. It's my dad's. (laughs) Yes, dad for the win. (laughs) Dad for the win, my little Yoda. But it's the best thing he has ever told me. Mm -hmm. He still says it to me multiple times a month. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you only lose if you quit. Woo. You only lose if you quit. So if you are an actor right now, struggling or any kind, any creative person, really, yeah. if you're a PA who, who's out of work, if you're a wardrobe person mm-hmm. out of work right now, an mm-hmm. actor, a, a writer, a director, whoever, yeah. right? If, uh, or, or even if you're not in the entertainment field and you're happening to be listening to this and you're in a slump, yeah. you only lose if you quit. Yeah. Um, and it, it's that simple, yeah. uh, you know, and, and I think the key to not quitting, I just kind of, the light bulb just went off just now. <laughs> yes. The key to not quitting, right? The key to getting through the in-between mm-hmm. is the pivot. Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. That's how you not quit. Yeah. And, and, and that's, light bulbs right. are like, bing! flying in my head right now that is how i'm still here Mm -hmm. that is how i've made a 20 something year career Mm -hmm. out of this and there have been ups and downs but there have there has never been a time Mm -hmm. where i can honestly sit here and tell you that i wasn't an actor that i quit right even the times where there were long stretches of unemployment or not really being super creative, there was always the undercurrent. Yeah. There was always a, a constant tiny stepping forward, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And 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 within the pivot, when I whether it was going and temping at a a, a property management company for a year after grad school, yeah. well, I was still taking class. Mm -hmm. I was still auditioning every now and then, right? I was still trying to be, not even trying, I was still being a creative person, being an artist. Um, And so that, that's it. Uh, And, and I, that is something I will, I will live by till my very last breath. Mm -hmm. Um, And if ever there comes a time where I decide I'm done doing this, yeah. um, I think I'll have satisfaction in knowing that I don't think I can, I don't think I will ever actually quit. Right. I may decide that this journey is over, mm-hmm. that I've come to the end of the road, that I've gotten everything I wanted out of this. And if there comes a time where I, retire Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. or i leave i decide to leave i'm never going to quit i'm going to decide and therefore i will have never i will have never lost i will have never really failed Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's the lesson yeah oh i love that (laughs) thanks dad thanks dad (laughs) dad for the win yes bob bob feastfield yes you can thank you a lot of applause Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Talia, thanks so much for sharing. Thank you, thank you Ayana, so for having sharing. me. This was wonderful. Yes, I feel the same. And so before I let you go, uh, two things. One, where can people find you out here on the interwebs? Absolutely. Um, you can find me, uh, easiest place to find me is on the gram mm-hmm. at the Act of Style Coaching. Uh, all one word, The Act of Style Coaching. You can also go to theactofstylecoaching.com. That is my coaching website um, if you're interested in getting more information about working with me. Uh, I also have a TikTok by the same name, but I'm really bad at it. You can follow I mean, follow me. More, there's nothing wrong with more followers, right. but uh, I'm just really there to creep on, like, you know. Just see what's funny, see what's funny going TikTok. On, right? <laughs> but um, Instagram and my website, uh, and if you should you decide you want to email me, it, the easiest thing is to just email me through the, rep, the, the website. All right. Amazing. Sounds good. I will put that all in the show notes so that everybody could easily click on it. And awesome. I must say to you, Talia, that... I acknowledge you, I celebrate you, and I uplift you. Oh, I received that. Thank you. Right back at you. You're so very welcome. (laughs) Thank you. 
I hope you have been informed and inspired by this week's episode. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified when new episodes are out. To stay up to date and in the know about merchandise, exclusive content, and how to support the show, please subscribe to the newsletter at ayanabay.com slash podcast. That's A-Y-A-N-A-B-E-Y dot com slash podcast. And there's a link in the show notes. This show's executive producer is Ayana Major Bay and editor is Kieran Niemant. Thank you for tuning in and I'll speak to you soon.